Question, have you ever blown up your alternator on your Beetle? I have, several times, actually. This one has actually lasted me seven years, seven years. And I finally blew it up. Check it out, this is what I blew up. Voltage regulator blew up. Um, actually, this one actually blew up. I had another one and it kind of worked and I went ahead and installed it on the other one and it kind of worked. Um, but it, it was still doing the flaky shit that it was doing uh, about seven years ago. <laughs> so, but the alternator itself is actually good. That's not this one. This one is a 75, a brand new 75, not rebuilt, brand new 75. And uh, we're basically just going to replace it. Um, I was going to get the 90 one, 90 amp one. It uh, It's $200. This one's 109 for a 75 amp. So it's not too bad. The one that blew up is a, is a 55, 55. And it lasts me seven years and I beat the living crap out of it. Okay. With big stereo in the... 75 should be okay, I think. The 91, they only offer it in chrome or polished. And it's $200. Um, to me, it it is a waste of money. You know, that's just one more part you have to clean. And plain Jane like this one, it's, you know, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. But $200 versus 109 I mean, I'll go with the 75 for 109 And they do offer this in chrome or... Uh, or uh, polish, um, uh, but I was like, I want the plain Jane one, and they do offer it in plain Jane. They don't offer it in the 90 amp one, so I went with this. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and replace this thing on the other one, so you guys know uh, how to do this, if that way you don't have to replace your whole, all, your whole alternator, especially if you have a big beefy one like this one, this is a 75 like I said, or a, even a 90 one, you can actually just replace this. This is about $16 on Amazon. And you can replace it and your alternator will be up and running again. Uh, assuming you didn't then blow up a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, rectifier. Uh, there's three suckers in there. Oh, you can see in there. You can see the rectifiers, those little round things on the very, very bottom of there. Those are the rectifiers. Okay. You can, yeah, if you blow those up and then and now you just complicated everything for a repair, you just go get a new one. Get a new one. Do what I do. You just go get a new one. Don't worry about rebuilding it. Uh, if it's this, you're good. Okay, so let's get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one because this one, um, yeah, she blew up. She died. <laughs> the way you test these is you just check the voltage. You ground your, your, your multimeter here and you probe the positive here. You should get voltage. If you're not getting any voltage, check that this guy is still you know, sending the, the negative signal to turn it on. And the way you do that is basically you look at your dash, at your uh, alternator light, and you basically unplug this and touch the ground and your alternator light should turn on, which tells you that the circuit for this wire is functional. So something's wrong inside. And what it was, it's the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the voltage regulator. Um, my mind is fried. I'm, I'm tired, man. I've been working 14 hours a day for the last three weeks and I'm just burnt the F out. And, uh, and I wasn't going to do a video on this and, you know, cause I'm just burned out, but, uh, I'm going to do my best not to look burned out. I'm not burned out. I'm okay. So I'm just glad that I don't have the cover right here. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. So here we go.
Okay, so basically, big nut, you remember, you always use Loctite. I always do. This will come loose inside your doghouse, okay? Ah, you don't want that happening. So, socket, you need a big socket. Okay. And you basically do this. This washer is keyed, or kind of, sort of. I always put it so that the flaps point down towards the flywheel. You know, yay. Okay. Anyways, who cares? I don't think it matters. You can flip it over. It doesn't matter. Okay, this comes off. Come on. Okay, this is fairly new. I bought this not too long ago when I was converting it from the thinner one to the th thicker. Okay, because the 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 one that uses the regular uh, uh, fan shroud with the older fan shroud basically is thinner. And this is for dog house, dog, dog house only. They're bigger, they move more air. So this is what I did. Converted it. So this used to belong to the other style of this. So there are shims in here, okay? These shims, usually it, it goes exactly the same, you took it apart. So I don't think it, it would matter that much, but um, you need to put these back here. Okay, this does slide off. Maybe. Okay, she's being stubborn, so we're gonna use this. <laughs> Let's see, I don't know what size this is. Is this a 5 8? Oh, yeah. You might need one of these. Sometimes they slide right off. Yeah, it's coming right off. But I can tell it's tight. So, rust, you know. Get one of these. They come in handy. Okay, so that means we can take this off now. 10 millimeters. Just two 10 millimeter bolts. Nuts, sorry. Nuts. And this whole thing will come off. Make sure you take pictures. You know how it goes. This thing is oriented relative to you know, this part right here. Make sure you make marks and stuff. That way you don't get lost. I already know how it goes, so I'm not gonna do that. Because uh, <laughs> I've had a beetle since I was 14. Why would you have a beetle since you were 14? I don't know. I just found him attractive. I know they're ugly. <laughs> oh God. Anyways, so take this off, okay? Uh, these are two pieces, okay? Actually, three pieces. Uh, there's this thing, which is chromed on this one, but they don't, they're not usually chromed, they're usually just black. And inside here, there's another ring. This exactly, it looks exactly like this. It goes between this metal and this metal. No, I'm not gonna clean this. No, this will get like this within a week. So you're wasting your time. Just as long as it's not caked up with a lot of grease, which is, this is not, it's just dust. Kind of, sort of. So, whatever. And yes, but see if I can move this so you guys can see. There's another ring in here, see? That ring goes together with that. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. I gotta, gotta recenter all that stuff. Okay. Done. And... This alternator is basically done. So we're gonna put this aside. We're gonna assemble the new one. And then later on, we'll go in here and replace the, the this guy. We'll replace it from here and we'll open it up. But right now, I just wanted the parts so we can assemble that guy. So just like so. So we're gonna put this back the way we found it. Making sure I have it right, clocked right, or I'm gonna be crying. Crying. Oh, can't do that yet. Gotta put this back on. Now I can. And washer, washer, nut. A 
la da di 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 la da di 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 Hocus Pocus. Abracadabra. I got Bugs Bunny in my head, okay. Bugs Bunny. The Bugster. Sorry, I'm probably blocking you, huh? Yeah, probably am. I'm not usually a lefty guy. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, let me just tighten it. It should be good. Okay. It ain't coming loose. Next. This guy. Back on. There is a key here. Okay, so you have to align it with the key. Key. This thing is coming off. Falling off. Okay. Ta-da! He's in. Okay. I'm gonna put these back on like yay. And put this back on. There we go. It wasn't seated all the way down. Now it is. Loctite! Okay, you don't need a lot of Loctite. Not like it did. Not like I did it. So just enough make sure it doesn't back out that's all you need that's probably way too much so I'll just have to live with it if it's too much next time I take it off it'll be I'm gonna have to use this guy again whatever what I'm doing is I did it by hand because I want to make sure that the washer doesn't fall to the down and then you're gonna have a big mess crooked mess right here so I just want to make sure that the, the, the washer is still keyed perfectly. Okay. How much? There is a torque specification for this. I had never followed it. Don't do as I do. We're good. And spin it. You shouldn't hear any quack, 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 quack. Otherwise, you're going to be rubbing right here. And this is not the straightest fan. I mean, look at this fan. Not the straightest thing on the world. <laughs> I always wondered if this thing was gonna go poof, you know, at 6,000 RPMs. It hasn't, so it's it's surviving for the last seven years. That's done. Now we can go ahead and put it on. So you guys can see that it's on, it's bolted on, and now the, the truth. Okay, no, it's not rubbing. Because usually when you put it back on here, it'll start rubbing. And this one, he can spin it, and it ain't rubbing. Okay, so we're good. If it ain't rubbing, continue, and bam, done. Okay, she's fits perfectly. Um, actually, this alternator is actually thinner, so it's actually lower, which means this does not tighten all the way now. I mean, it's tight, but it's not anti-squeal tight. <laughs> so I might have to put a shim right here that goes around the alternator, a very thin metal shim, shim to bring it back up. So that it tightens up. Gun it. But it should run fine. Um, let's go ahead and start it up and see what happens. Okay, let's see if it starts. Do we have lights? We got, okay, we got our generator slash alternator. Well, this one used to have a generator before. So we converted it to alternator. So now it's an alternator light. We got our oil light. And uh, let's see what happens. I might have flooded it when I was sinking the carburetors. So... Let's see if it starts.
Because there was slight squealing, but it wasn't that bad. I've heard worse. Okay. It's running pretty good. Um, see that? Yeah, it's a little loose. So it's gonna squeal. Let me see if I can make it squeal. You heard it. She's squealing. All right. That's not as bad as the V-belt, though. V-belt was squealing like you wouldn't believe. All right. So I'm going to have to jerry-rig that to tighten up the, van, the the belt. Or I just go to AutoZone and get another belt, the smaller one. I'll probably do that instead. Okay, so I just got back from some running some errands. Yeah, daily driver. Like I said, this is always a daily driver. So I got back and basically it doesn't squeal that much. It only starts squealing when I get to about close to 5,000 RPMs. It begins to squeal. Uh, but normal driving, it doesn't really squeal. So, uh, But we have to fix this because um, I just determined that I can't get a bigger belt. There's a reason for that. Um, basically, the alternator is actually like pointing down. In other words, the this pulley is not uh, true to this pulley. This edge does not conform to this edge right here. It actually hits the inner part of this edge because the front sh fan shroud cannot go any further down. So it's actually high on the back and low over here. So high and low causes a downward uh, deflection on the belt. So this is why it's, yeah. So we have to put a shim right here to bring it up. So that this guy doesn't have to be on the very edge. It'll be more centered. And um, yeah, so that's it. So let's make a, make a shim and um, put it on so that we can raise it up. One weekend of pampering later. Okay, so I got my little thing. I have to cut a little bit more out of it because it was too wide. So it's just going to go like that. It's perfectly formed. I con contoured to the alternator. This is going to go like that. That should give me my height. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that on. <sighs> I should paint that, huh? This is going to rust. Yeah, let me paint that real quick. Okay, so I already took apart all of this stuff. The, the belt you know, um, is off. The, the strap, it goes right here. I, I moved it over. So now I can lift everything and install our painted little shim. It, I'm going to try to put it at the very bottom. At the very bottom, not like that or like yay, flat and on the bottom. And as far as it hitting this metal right here, so it'll be, think, you know, kind of sort of like that. That's the whole idea. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. She's in the middle, so pretty sure that brought my alternator up higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the strap. All right, let's find out, see what happens over here, see if the belt tightens up. I'm gonna put this back as soon as I put the belt back on. Hopefully, everything will go according to plan. I don't think I'm gonna need two shims. Pretty sure. Oh yeah. See, this thing is not way the hell over here anymore. This washer, it's not the way, way over here. Now it's kinda sorta in the middle, still kinda, eh. Pretty darn close. Way better. Okay, you gotta push it. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I call tight. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, that is good and tight. Let me check, see if it's true now. Going down, because I want to see if it's, you know, looking at this face and this face, on the right on the edge, and I should be right on the edge of this face. And that's how you know if you're true. Wait, you look at that. We are schmack right on the edge of this when I look down like that. Perfect. And it used to be over here, land over here. All right, so consider this fixed. It's fixed, trust me. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and open the other alternator and, and replace the regulator. This is my old alternator. This has been heavily modified. It is a 50, 50 amp. <laughs> I thought it was a 55. I just looked at the sticker. That sticker says it's 50. <laughs> So it finally blew up, okay? So I went to a 75 and there you go. Um, so this 50, we're just gonna replace the the uh, uh, the regulator, voltage regulator. Now, this one has been heavily modified, okay? This does not have regular rectifiers. Okay, the rectifiers that are in here are 230 amp. They belong to uh, one of these. And uh, yeah, big semi truck. And I just removed them and they happen to be the same size. So I went ahead and installed them on this. It is, I mean, you guys want to know how I did that. I know you probably do, but I'm going to tell you this. I did make a video of this. Here are the rectifiers. These are the original ones for this. They're tiny. Okay, the ones that are in here, they're exactly the same size, except this is like this long. Instead of being this, you know, this small, they're about that long. They're twice as, almost twice as thick. 230 amp. This is probably like maybe 60 amp, maybe 55 amps, and then they blow. If you pull too much current out of these, they'll blow. So this one's been heavily modified. And I think this is why it lasted forever. It, because this was brand new, and I think I blew it up within one week. I could have taken it back, you know, got another one. But what's the point? I knew what was happening. So I just replaced these guys for bigger ones and uh, it never blew up after that okay the the only thing that blew up is actually this the voltage regulator but I think like I, I, I actually blew it up accidentally by um, what do you call it um, too much volume on my stereo it came on suddenly I'm gonna blame the Android stereo damn Android okay so word of advice before you take this off okay gotta remove the key key remove this shim okay this shim only goes one way the rounded edge right here goes facing down the really flat edge goes up the reason is sometimes these alternators have like a little edge down here that has a curve and the curve matches this cut right here or this you know okay anyways that's why it goes like that and if you put it backwards it's gonna be higher and everything's gonna rub you're gonna get your fans gonna rub same thing for the pulley it's got another one of these make sure you put it in exactly the same way with the uh, beveled edge inward towards the alternator on both sides okay okie doke you've been warned now if you're only replacing the let's get this out. if you're only replacing this then leave your pulley on I just put this on because when you take this off the whole shaft shifts a lot and you don't want it to shift a lot because the brushes that are being held in by this guy are going to get all fucked up so just you know leave that on and go ahead and remove this okay that one's all stuff i know i should be using a drill right right My favorite songs okay i should be able to pull it out okay and get this off before i lose it okay so simple you're in there see um uh, early in the video i said they have three i didn't finish my sentence three anodes and three cathodes okay there's one two three back here and one two three when i say they're anodes or cathodes I'm talking about the base. The base is the metal part. This is considered to be a base, okay? 
anode and cathodes. In other words, they're basically the same thing, but they're reversed. Okay. So you got to pay attention. You got to buzz them out. You got to know what you're doing if you go in there. Okay. Like I said, I made a video of this, but it's like three hours long and it's like very technical and it's, I'm not going to release that video. It's just, nobody's going to watch it. Plus, I don't think there's a lot of people that want to know how to repair these alternators anyways. They just, they're really, they're cheap. I mean, you get the, you can get the 90 amp for $200, which is too much for me, but I mean, <laughs> too expensive for me. <laughs> but for a hundred bucks, basically you can get a 75, close to a hundred bucks, just over a hundred bucks, 110. Okay. Okay. Removing the screws there. There's another little base metal that goes underneath it. It keeps it from shit falling on the contacts here and rotting out. It's like a little deflector. Okay, we're gonna take this guy off. And so on and so forth, like this one. I pre-loosened everything because I didn't want to be here like forever. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you do. Okay, this goes in a certain way. You can't really screw this up because these wires that hook up to this are like different sizes, see? See, they're like humongous, little. Okay, so you can't fuck it up. Of course, then there's that idiot that will. Hmm. They'll prove you wrong. Okay. So, comes up. Okay, see, I'm pluggy the red one, it's the small one, come on, there we go, and then the other one, okay, these are your brushes, mine, this one's a little worn, this one's still okay, um, yeah, whatever, now the reason that I'm calling this amp, this, this, uh, alternator, well, while you're there, you can just pull that out, right, this is the, the bad one, and, this is the little metal that goes there. I'll show you how it goes. In here, you can see that where the brushes ride, right there on those little copper things. This shaft, that part is so dug in, it, it's not even funny. They're worn the fuck out. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna repair it with a new, new uh, this thing, and this'll just be a spare for the future in case the 75 amp it uh, ever blows. And trust me, I'm gonna blow that shit. <laughs> I got a big amp, man. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna blow. But at least I'll know, you know, boom, boom, boom. Oh, you get, you got, you got a better look right here. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. They're anode and cathode, or cathode or anode. I don't know. I need, I would need to buzz it out. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, okay. So we are going to replace. Where did I put that? Oh, it's over here. I'm going to replace this puppy. And basically this metal thing goes right here. See how it goes? Okay. It goes in like that. Now I have to remember how this thing goes. Yeah, it goes like this. If in doubt, just remember the letters Bosch go towards the... towards up. You know. Yeah. Um... Oh, drop that thing. Do over. Let's see. I'll just do this. How's that? Okay, put this on. Snug it. Don't tighten it because you're going to have to move the bottom plate a little bit to get the other one in. Um, perfectly centered to the to the other um, thread. And just go like that. And you can go ahead and tighten it now. It's tight. Very simple. I mean, anybody can do this. I mean, you don't need to be a mechanic. Anybody can do this. You watch this video, you'll know how to do this. Okay, she's done. Okay. 
Actually, to make this a lot easier, you could probably, if you want, put this back on. Make sure you mark your things before you take it apart. This already have a mark right there. See? You see that? Okay, now I'm going to look for my mark over here, which is right there. Uh, yeah, you, you can see it right there. So I know how it goes. It goes like that. This will just center everything. I love that song. It reminds me I was driving my 65 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Me all bass system in that sucker. When I was going to high school. And then I eventually got a Beetle. Well, actually I got a, a Rabbit. 75 Rabbit. And um, I had a blast. I had a blast growing up. I wouldn't trade my life for anything. Anyways, no, not even a millionaire. I'm fine the way I am. Anyways, okay, so wires, they're right here. Pull them up. Okay. And align that. Okay, this metal thing, it has a little contact right there. That one is going to go right to this metal here. So make sure that this metal hasn't bent down and it's no longer touching here, because then you'll get a failure, okay? If, if you have to bend it up a little bit, like yay, you know, see how I'm bending it up? Just so that it does contact this. Okay. Now, if your shit is doing this, obviously you can't put it in like that, right? If you do, it ain't gonna go well. Sure, you kinda... Ah, hopefully it'll stay there. Probably will. I'm gonna go with... The green one first, which is the big thick one. And then I'm gonna go with the red one. If I can. Come on, baby. Okay. And it's still holding its spot right there. That's good. Push it down. And that's it. Frankie, Frankie! It's my first record I ever bought when I was like six years old. You know, a vinyl record, not a CD or anything like that. There was no such thing back then. There's only cassettes, eight tracks, and vinyl records. That's all there was back then when I was a child. Yeah, there was no Atari back then. What? What's an Atari? Um, Xbox. No such thing as that. There was Pong. I remember Pong. That's it, whatever. It's like, you don't really miss what you don't know exists, what's going to exist in the future, okay? So it's like, yeah, who cares? I had a good childhood. I look at my kids, and then I go, man, I did a lot of shit compared to what they do just watching their phones. Anyways, that is it. She's spinning. Make sure my brushes are set in correctly in there. I'm looking inside. Yeah, there are. They're perfect. Okay, they seated perfectly. I, I was afraid one of them would go sideways, you know. But no, it's perfect. Okay, so this this thing is done. I just put the the thing like I said. Ooh, I was gonna put it backwards. Ooh, you see that? Okay, this with the little shave it thingy on the inside goes down, and then the key. The key. And that's it. And I'm just going to put this on here so I don't lose it. But this is where the big nut goes, right there. Okay. This alternator is good to go. Okay, it's really that simple. All right, muchachos and muchachas, I'm pretty much done. I'm out of here. I am burnt the fuck out. I'm going to go to sleep now because I am tired. I am tired. I've been working so many hours. This is why I haven't made any videos. I am working my ass off. And I'm... Um, I don't have time to spend my money. That sucks. <laughs> I'll edit that. Anyways. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachas. I los macho. Peace. Wait. Peace. <laughs>